Hey, what's up you guys? It's Connor and today I'm going to be doing another book haul. This is going to have a lot of books that were sent to me by publishers, specifically Tor because they sent a lot to me recently. <laughs> There's a couple of books that I bought myself as well, so let's just get into it. The first book I bought for myself is The Dreadful Tale of Prosper Redding by Alexandra Bracken. This is a middle grade novel that was nominated for the Booktube SFF Awards and it's the last one in that category that I need to read before the award show. It follows this boy named Prosper Redding and he is the only unexceptional person in his family, or so he thought, and it turns out that his great 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 grandfather made a pact with a demon, and now the demon has come for revenge on the Redding family, and it's Prosper's job to try to send the demon back to wherever it came from. I've actually heard some pretty good things about this, and so I'm gonna give it a go. I was gonna borrow the book from my library, but it was only the ebook, so I went ahead and picked up a physical copy for myself. For Easter, I got one of those Harry Potter coffee table books, and I got the Harry Potter the Wand collection, and this has all of the images of all of the wands and stuff like that. So it's got like Luna Lovegood's wand, and I pretty much have all of the Harry Potter wands. <laughs> so it'll be nice to see them in this instead of having to take them all out of their boxes because they're all still in their boxes, sitting all together like I have my own Ollivander store. Next up is something that I ordered for myself because I read the book from my library and absolutely loved it and I wanted a copy for myself. There's a lot of tape on this. Ah, how do you get this out of there? So I ended up picking up the UK version of Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. It is signed, which is nice. The only thing is that this came all crinkled in the back, so the dust jacket has now got some damage, which sucks. So I'll probably end up like laying it flat and putting books on top of it so that it smooths itself out, hopefully. That sucks. Anyway, this follows a boy named Laszlo Strange, and at the beginning of the book, he's being raised by monks because he's an orphan. He has this complete obsession of this mysterious city that no one has actually seen in person. He has done tons and tons of research on this city, and he just believes it to be real when no one else does. It turns out <laughs> that the city is real, and then the book is about him going and trying to save this mysterious city. The other character that it follows is a girl named Sarai, who is this girl who's trapped in a tower, trying to stay alive, and she has some magical abilities, which is pretty interesting. That did not do the book any justice, but I absolutely love this book, so I wanted a physical copy for myself, and now I have one. And I liked this cover better than the US cover. Next up is this one. I hate when they're not easy to open. I accepted a self-published middle grade novel called The Techno Wizard Passage to Avalon by Mike Thayer. Mike Thayer is actually the son of the teacher who taught both Brandon Sanderson and Brandon Mull, which I just thought was a fun fact. It follows this boy named Sam who finds himself in another parallel world called Avalon. In that world everyone has magic and everything like that, but he doesn't have magic because he's not from that world, but he still has all of the technological gadgets that he had when he came to Avalon. So he has a solar powered cell phone, a bag of high-tech spy gear, and a murderous wizard emperor on his tail. It sounds like it's going to be a very sarcastic middle grade romp, and that's something that I've been wanting to pick up recently, so I decided to accept it, and I will let you guys know what I think when I do read it and review it. Next up is the first thing from Tor. They contacted me and asked me if I was interested in participating in a couple of promotions. Oh my god, what is in there? <laughs> what is this? Oh my gosh. Okay, <laughs> so they gave me a little stuffed animal kitty cat with a pink collar on. Oh, that's so cool. It's a little jump drive. Thanks, Tor. I can always use those. So that's very cute. What else is in here? Some paper. This cat's name is Donut. It looks like I have something special on my collar. Okay, so I already found the something special, but this is Donut. Donut can chill right there. Oh wow, there's more in here. Next up is these, oh no, little candy chocolate sports candies, but it looks like they've melted, and I hope they didn't get on the book. Wow, is that lucky it did not get on the book. It did get on this one. So, in here is a copy of Lock In by John Scalzi. This one follows this future world where people can get this disease that traps them inside of their bodies, and they're called Locked In. Locked in, lock in. The way that locked in people can still be out in the world is that they use integrators and they can take over other people's bodies for a limited amount of time. But it seems like one of these locked in people 
has used an integrator to kill someone and it follows the FBI agents trying to solve the case and figure out what the heck is happening. I love John Scalzi's writing. I read his Old Man's War series and I read Fuzzy Nation and Red Shirts by him and I just love his humor and his writing style. So I think I'm gonna really enjoy this one. I have a hardcover copy of it on my shelf over there, but this one will be easier to throw in my bag. And I'm not gonna care if it gets ruined because it already has chocolate <laughs> all over the front of it. The other book in here is Head On, which is the sequel to that. And it says on this little paper here that this one has a lot of commentary on disability rights and prejudice against minorities. I'm down for that. And I will let you guys know what I think of these when I do get to them. Next up is this one from Tor, which I think they gave me a leftover box. Oh my gosh, I keep almost cutting myself. So this one is a promotion for their Earth Day related books, I guess. I just know that one of the books in here is from the perspective of a plant, and I was just, I'm so ready for that. <laughs> like, I really want to read that book, if I could ever open this box. Alrighty, let's open it. So, it looks like it has some paper and some confetti and some shamrocks. Leftover St. Patrick's Day decorations, maybe? Oh, wow, okay, so there's a lot. Here we go, here's everything that's in it. On this paper it says, Torf slash Forge Books is an imprint of Macmillan Publishing and is dedicated to reducing our carbon footprint as we actively work to go green. All right, so let's check out these books. First up is a book called Earthseed by Pamela Sargent, and this book is signed. There it is, right there, it's tiny, but it's there. So this one is set in a future world where Earth is no longer inhabitable, so humans have shipped off eggs and sperm with this ship to go find another inhabitable planet, and the ship has created these people out of the eggs and sperm that were donated. The ship has been mother, father, and loving teacher, preparing them for their biggest challenge, surviving on their own planet. Then the ship decides to test them to make sure that they're ready to survive on their own. And then, it, I guess, there's betrayals and all this stuff. And it says, Ken Zo Zoharet, which is the main girl character's name, and her companions overcome the biggest obstacle to the survival of the human race themselves. Dun dun dun! This one is all about survival and how we killed off the Earth. Oh my gosh, I've been wanting to read this one. This one is Crossroads of Canopy by... Oh... Taraya Dyer, is that how you say that? This one follows a girl named Unar who escapes her parents who try to sell her into slavery. I guess their society lives all up in the canopy of this huge forest, but she, after escaping, goes to the understory and finds magic and everything like that. I've heard some really good things about this, so I'm actually pumped <laughs> to read this one because I've been meaning to pick this one up, and now I have a copy of it. All right, <laughs> and also in here is the sequel. Echoes of Understory by Thorea Dyer. Thorea Dyer. So I'm not going to tell you what this one's about because it's the sequel to this one. That's awesome. Thank you guys. One weird thing <laughs> is that they're not the same size. <laughs> That's so weird. Next up is Pacifica by Kristen Simmons. This one is set in a world where the oceans have been highly polluted, kind of like how we're doing now. And it follows this girl named Marin who is the daughter of this pirate king, sort of. Corsario royalty, a pirate like her father. There's a lottery for 500 people to go to this paradise where there is blue skies, green grass, clear oceans, but she thinks that it is a con because she has lived on the waters and they're still super polluted. So she's figuring out where they're shipping all these 500 people to and what is happening to them and trying to save them. This one is more about the water pollution. <laughs> Tor always likes to send candy, but the candy always melts because I live in Florida. So <laughs> I end up with books that have like crap all over them, which what is this one about? Next up is Symbiosis by Sue Burke. This one follows these human colonists that are trying to find the perfect new planet. They end up on this planet that they think is uninhabited, but there is a creature that's on the planet that is watching them and waiting. The humans have to survive being on this new planet. It doesn't say anything else. It seems like it's gonna be like a science fiction survival thriller, maybe? We'll see. Oh wow, there's a lot of goodies in here as well. Beside the mouthy candy, there are a couple of bookmarks for the tiger's daughter, which I do have, and I'm still very excited to read. It's up at school with me, so I don't have it here to show you, but it is about these two women warriors who are the descendants of 
two other well-known warriors, and they are destined to be together. So it's about two badass lesbian ladies, and I've heard really good things. So, <laughs> yeah. Bookmarks for that. There is this pin that is a plant, a little, what are those, daisies? There's this green cup, which I drink so much water at school, so it'll be nice to have something to carry it in that has a straw, instead of me doing this and my professors looking at me, because I don't like when they notice me. Do not microwave, hand wash only. There is a little potted plant eraser, which is super cute. I don't use pencil, but I will be giving this to my brother because he does. It looks like there's a small field notebook that you can use the plant pen on. There was a, oh wow, this is actually cooler than I thought. There's a bouncy ball earth. Let's see if it'll focus. So there it is. It's actually pretty cool. There's a lot of candy in there. I think this one is the one that's in the perspective of a plant. The last book from Tor doesn't look like it's from the perspective of a plant. So this is the one I was the most excited about. The last book from Tor in the Earth Day box is Panacea, Pan, Pan, is that how you say that? By F. Paul Wilson, is, is that what it is? Anyway, this one follows a medical examiner and she has two charred corpses and no answers as she starts looking into these deaths and these miracle cures that seem to be happening. She suspects that it might be panacea, which is this miracle cure that cures all ills. She gets mixed up with the deadly secret group known only as 536 or 536, a brotherhood that vows to destroy the panacea and anyone who knows of its existence. Dun dun dun! So these were the books that were in the Earth Day box and I am pumped for them, especially this one because I want to read from the perspective of a plant and this one because I've heard really good things. <laughs> All right, last box. The last one in here is from Penguin Random House. So we'll see what's in here. I have a feeling I know what it is, but I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> oh, okay. So Penguin <laughs> Random House, I guess, sent me the new copies of An Ember in the Ashes and A Torch Against the Night by Saba here. I have actually done reviews, I think, on both of these books, so I'll leave those up in the card symbol if you want to check out my thoughts on them, but I did really enjoy them when I read them. I think I enjoyed An Ember in the Ashes a little more than A Torch Against the Night, but the third book comes out pretty soon. I didn't like the cover change at first, but now that I see these, I'm actually okay with it. They're actually pretty good. It follows this girl who is trying to save her brother, and then it also follows this boy named Elias who is just trying to survive this training for these elite group of soldiers that are in this world and he decides that he is gonna help Laia, Leia, Laia, I've never been able to say her name, <laughs> find her brother and it's just a fun ride. It is a little darker than a lot of YA tends to get so I really appreciated that as well. The society that they're living in has a lot of Roman influences, or at least I think it does. And yeah, check out those reviews if you wanna know more. These are the new covers and they look awesome. So I don't usually show eBooks in book hauls because I, I like never read eBooks, but uh, Taryn Mathrew ended up contacting me. He's the author of the Summoner series, which I freaking love. I did book reviews for the second and last book in the series and I'm about to start reading the prequel for the series because I'm just so excited for it. Anyway, he and a couple of other authors, namely um, Michael R. Miller who wrote the Dragon's Blade trilogy, which I've read the first two books and did book reviews on those as well. They created this new publishing house that publishes books that are based on, I don't know, like science fiction, gaming kind of things. They sent me the first book and that is Warden Nova Online by Alex Knight. It's, it follows this guy who gets accused of murder and he didn't commit the murder and he gets sent to this game and he has to serve as a warden and make sure everyone is following the rules and everything like that as his prison sentence. But he then decides that he's going to use the game to try to figure out what happened and why he was wrongly accused of murder, improve his innocence, and everything like that. It's described as a Ready Player One meets Halo. We'll see how it is when I do get to it after everything kind of calms down during the summer after finals. I'll let you guys know what I think of this one as well. So those are all the books that I got recently. I have a lot of reading to do. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up and comment down below what you've acquired recently. Do you want to see me review any of these books sooner rather than later so that I can kind of prioritize the ones that you guys want to see me read first. Anything else you want me to know, leave it down below and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.